This is Nina Curley of Wamda Media. I'm here at the Pavilion in Dubai chatting with Shashi Menon, the co-founder of Nervora, a digital media startup that's connecting premium brands to a regional audience. Shashi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? Excellent. So you guys represent some of the biggest brands globally, like Hearst and Condé Nast, um, biggest content brands, and you're trying to help them localize and come into the region. What was the first deal that you landed that kind of allowed you to start selling to high-end brands like this? We were pretty fortunate in that the first company we started working with was Condé Nast, uh, arguably the world's most influential and premium publisher of lifestyle and fashion content. And my co-founder, Nick, got his start at TechCrunch in Silicon Valley, and so he made a lot of friends there in the Valley. And one of them was the co-founder of Reddit, a guy named Alexis Ohanian, whose company got acquired by Condé Nast in 2006. And so when we were getting started in late 2009, Nick started talking with Alexis. Alexis got us an introduction to the publisher of Condé Nast Digital after about three months, and a short phone call later, and we were, we were off to the races. And from there, we've been able to close partnerships with brands like Hearst, CBS Interactive, and Viacom, representing really well-known international brands like CNET, uh, Gizmodo, Esquire, Cosmopolitan, Marie Claire, Harper's Bazaar, and, uh, and MTV. How did you continue to build your client base after that? What kinds of companies were you seeing that wanted to come into the region? Yeah, I mean, just to step back, I mean, I think the really important thing to get started is to be able to offer some fundamental piece of value. And I think the thing that we were able to show these international brands was we could help them explore a really emerging region of the world in a way that wasn't very costly to them, either financially or operationally. And by identifying that sort of root level of value, we were able to get started and then show a path to them. And from there, we basically had to spend a lot of time to really understand their product and, and package it in a way that, that made sense to brands here, and then just be really, really aggressive approaching brands out here and showing them the advantages of, of positioning themselves alongside premium value, or premium media, rather. If you look at the rest of the world, there are a lot of brands and regions, or publishers and regions, that are seeing either slow or declining or even negative growth, and so they're under a lot of pressure to identify other regions of the world where they can go and grow, and, and fortunately for us, the Middle East is actually a region that has a lot of untapped potential. I mean, we're looking at a region with 340 million Arabic speakers, and only a small fraction of that is currently online, so there's a lot of upside there. And Dubai itself is a really well-known international hub now, and it's a safe place to do business, and so I think for us the great thing was that we were able to start from a small base and show that there's some level of value and then really start approaching big international brands that really do focus on internationalization. And what kind of advertising are these brands mostly looking to connect with? Um, do you think we'll see a shift from brands uh, wanting to advertise in print to coming predominantly online in the next few years? What are your thoughts on that? That's certainly what we're building towards. I, I mean, I think what we kind of look at is the attention share and the sort of disparity between the amount of time and attention consumers here in the region are spending on digital platforms like the internet and mobile phones relative to how much ad dollars are being thrown at that. And there's a really massive disparity there. And if you look at other regions in the world like the US, that disparity has really reduced over time. And there's still a big disparity, but our belief is that that, will, that gap will reduce. And so as that starts to happen, we think that there's really going to be a sort of step function increase in the amount of, of investment that brands are willing to make on, on digital. And our goal is to really focus on rich media and non-traditional ad formats and brand experiences to really help these brands connect to their audience in meaningful ways that can't be replicated on things like television or, or print. There's a very well-known technology brand that we're launching an ad campaign for, which is, is one of the most interactive, uh, technologically advanced ad campaigns they've ever done. And we basically built an ad that has built-in motion detection, so you can actually control the ad using, using your hands and your webcam to really experience the features of, of the product that they were looking to pitch, which is a, a television with built-in motion control. Uh, what were your biggest challenges? I mean, you've made it sound easy. Uh, you came into the region with you know, some connections that help you get set up. But what were your biggest challenges getting set up in Dubai and doing business in Dubai? Uh, well, I, I, I can definitely say that it wasn't easy. I, I think the thing is you, you spend enough time working on a problem and you start to find, you start to find solutions. But one of the big challenges that we face on an ongoing basis, I think, is just hiring and retaining talent. And we're in a market that doesn't really have the same sort of embedded startup culture that, that the West does. And so you have people that, that value different sorts of things. Whereas, in, and to give you a very specific example, in the West, people and people who are working in startups really value things like, like stock and the sort of excitement and lack of structure that they'll get in a startup environment. Whereas here, you have a lot of people that 
want to move in that direction but don't yet have that background and so they're not yet comfortable with that idea. What are the, some of the ways that you guys are going to create buzz on the site? Condé Nast is a storied 120-year-old brand. Style.com is a brand that was first launched in September of 2000 as the online home for Vogue before Vogue actually had a website. And so it has a very big international and also a very big regional audience. And so a lot of people in or around the fashion industry, whether they be consumers or buyers or designers or marketeers, have a lot of trust and belief in style.com as a brand and so there's a lot of excitement already that's been built up and one of the ways that we've seen that start to materialize is the audience that we've built on Facebook over the past month since launching our, our fan page and we're nearing 45,000 fans which is a great base to launch from. The second part is we actually have a lot of knowledge of the existing audience within the region that is interested in fashion because they're already accessing the international style.com site or other fashion or style or luxury sites within the Condé Nast portfolio. And so there's a really great opportunity for us to surface the brand and surface the content to that specific audience. And the last part of, of how and why we think we'll generate excitement is just by producing exceptional content. Uh, and so we've built a, a team of exceptional, exceptional, exceptionally talented people who are really passionate about fashion and have their own brands already. And so I think that's what's getting people excited and that's what we think will create the long-term excitement around the brand. Thanks for chatting with us. Thanks very much.